You are now tuned into episode 32 of the Hip Pod Heads podcast. I am No Sage along with Novak as always. And we got a special guest on the show. And correction, it's actually episode 33, but I was really, really, really hoping to get this guest on the show for quite some time. And I'm glad it's finally happened. Yes. Are we the indigo? You're yeah. here. We oh. are here. Thank y'all for having me today. Um, definitely blessed to be able to hit uh, the podcast with y'all and chat. Yeah, and no, I appreciate it. I mean, like, we're going to talk about a lot of things. I mean, we're going to talk about your new album this year, obviously. Um, you know, you being a, a young artist in the shy, you know, basically, um, obviously being a Mexican female artist and, you know, you moving out east and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. You know, I was kind of curious, like, um, there's so many, <laughs> there's so many hip hop <laughs> Easter eggs in your vibe, in your lyrics, in just your brand, right? So it's like, you know, like, are we the indigo? That's not like any riff off of like Chance the Rapper, Parappa the Rapper. <laughs> like where where does Ari the Indo Indigo come from? Because I know Indigo is sort of a play mm -hmm. off Chicago, right? Yeah, but for there's sure. layers to it though. There's layers to it, most stuff. Um, a lot of that idea of an indigo child did not come, like I did not discover it myself. It came like listening to Jaden Smith. And like his whole misfit brand and he would always mention this term indigo and so i did research i read books about um this term and like what it means so it's like a term in spirituality and it means like a child or youth that has or like any person can be an indigo but that you have like that indigo aura and like you kind of are here to like bend the rules and like make your way into the world your own way if that means like questioning the systems and like are the, the things happening around you and so I like as a youth I was that person and I was like hey wait a second like I'm that like I have all these things that describe this indigo child so I was like fuck it like let me make that part of like my identity forever <laughs> type shit so yeah I love that I love that yeah like because uh, even in some of your raps, like you say, in, in the go, you know, in the shy, in the Chicago land, but it's like, indigo, you even give a shout out to the indigos too. So I was, I was curious, like, are you, are you preaching on the color? But I didn't, I didn't know about the origins of like, you know, mm -hmm. what you just, that gem yeah, just that's the dream, you know, for other youth to like, that feel that sort of way, but don't know of a community or like, just listen to like my music. They can feel or they can resonate you know with that message of who's behind that but yeah uh, I, gotta, I gotta admit that you know one of the things you know, i was getting ready for this show i was watching paradise that paradise video is like you and you're in your you're in your whole element in that video you're in this particular vibe you're showing the shots to chicago you got the skyline in the background when you're rapping outside man outside chicago chicago theater i was like man it's almost like it's like everything coming full circle if you know what i mean like your vibe outside just sitting outside the city you know doing your thing you know watching traffic go by pretty much you, you're in your own world i love that video for, for sure most of um you know like the idea of paradise i was like like everyone can go into the city and then record a video of them rapping, walking down the street. But I was like, how can I make it in a way where like people are focused in the way I'm myself in my city, you know, like, yes, the beautiful scenery is in the back, like the sign, the Chicago sign. But if you like really pay attention to the way I'm walking so peacefully, like that's what paradise is about. You know, like that's my paradise. And like, I really wanted to like show that little element to it. Now me being like myself in the city, yeah. Yeah, that that video was super nice. Obviously, it was off your first Thank album you. in 2019, and I told Iowa Rockwell. Um, obviously, we've had him on the show, but I told him like when I first heard that song, I was like, "Man, I wanted to do a track forever that had sort of like an audio clip of the CTA train." 
And mm-hmm. for me, the the line that I always wanted to use, and maybe I might use it at one point, where it's like, you know, this is Chicago, right? It's telling you like, this is this, this is that. You have arrived at that. But I think in the beginning, it says what, like, it's from the this pink is, line or something like that? Yeah, this is, for example, this is 18. This is the right. pink line train to the loop. Yo, yo. <laughs> yeah, so like, me too. Like, similar to you, I, will, I would be in the train, like, <sighs> young as hell thinking one day I want to make this like a part of a song and I don't know if y'all need to get into it but like yeah. that was the first song I wrote with Iowa and recorded no are you serious yeah oh, wow and it's crazy because we did not do like let's grab coffee talk ideas type like he invited me over and that same day that like we didn't even talk, you know, he didn't know anything about me. I didn't know anything about him, but I got in the booth. He was like, do your thing. And and we <laughs> burned that together and like in his space. And it was just crazy because that was like the, that was what set me up for like the rest of my career, that that song in that moment right there. So it's really special to me. Wow. Yeah. No, that's nice to know. So um, that song, there's two things that I'm thinking about. So one so paradise basically where am i going with this so we before we recorded we were talking about basketball right and then i Mm -hmm. you made me think about i was balling with my my guy that i basically was babysitting right and it came to the point where he was so old that we finally were able to play ball on the court and i always knew he got game and i always knew i sort of had game but i was a hard worker you know like you already but anyhow i was like I was just curious what's going to happen when we're both on the court. And it was like, we never had any plays. We never had any conversation. We both ended up at the court and somehow Mm -hmm. we knew how to set each other up. And we were like having a conversation on the court, like without even like planning anything. So it was like, I feel like you and Iowa had that same type of dope connection. You know, y'all just like, let's get to work. Let's just put it in. Most definitely. It was, it was something that like, as cheesy as it sounds, like I think it was like, we were bound to, like me and like have that ongoing like creativeness between us because um we'd never even had to speak or say anything it was just right. like I met him at an open mic organized by like our mutual friends we did not speak we literally just exchanged numbers the next day I was at his house and we did that it was just like no. something that you can't describe <laughs> you know it's just like it's crazy yeah so shout out Iowa Rockwell that's like that's my mentor I call yeah. him my second dad. Like that that's that's him. For sure. I love that. So the other thing I was gonna bring up was so the pink line, is that or or more or less like homage to like growing up in like like Pil- Pilsen, I guess, or that area more um so to speak. Yeah, um definitely. Uh I don't Vita. Think that, Yeah, um <laughs> Pilsen, like that's I'm trying to claim that because there's not a lot of um young artists from Pilsen especially like female artists yeah so I want my people you know to, that hear me to like hey she mentioned our neighborhood you know like yeah that proud moment so that was an homage to Pilsen for sure I mean all, all your all your videos like man so mad love back to Chicago like you know Rex is like that Rex you know what I like about that video is, is the way, man, the way you moved around the bands and everything like that. You sit in the back seat. It gave me those Kendrick like vibes almost. Like, you know, he's rapping in the back seat. You get out the car. Then you got the you got the liquor store scene, basically, which is really smooth. And then I saw then I started noticing a little bit of your style. You got the half evil three uh half evil on basically the three mm-hmm. to three. That stuff is really nice. Uh that's really nice gear, by the way. Thank so you. like yeah, you know, you're. It's like you're. It's like you can see as an artist, man. When you're coming into your own, you, you get your style is evolving, and you know every video. You know, I love your videos. Every video has its own personality, its own style, and you're just rocking out in every in every shot. Most definitely, yeah. Um, Rax, I, I just in general, like when I, so I'm very proud to say that, like. I've had, I've been very blessed to like work with really dope videographers, but I direct all of my stuff and like every idea, every little element in my videos is something that I think of and like I want to put out there and like everything is significant as little as like putting a flower like on the floor. So I really like to try to think about it 
and including pieces like half evil which is a brand from the shy you know like mm -hmm. like people will recognize that like i take that in me and that's what racks is about like the rack um but yeah i've had the opportunity to record videos that are super fancy like thankfully like we'll get probably get into this later but i was signed for a year to like my university's record label um, and thankfully, like with their support, I've been able to, to record my last album and shoot um, I Que Sabe, the video that I did in L.A. So that yeah. video was like super dope gear used to record it. So clear. Rax um, is literally like my cousin recorded it um, oh. on a GoPro with his iPhone. Right. Is also just, in Cali as well or? No, in Chicago. Um, right, that's the Novak was talking about. Yeah, it. he brought his homies with the cool cars. Um, it was just <laughs> a vibe. It was just a vibe, and and definitely like it was dope to experience that. Yeah, like Rex had like a closer um perspective going on because obviously the um the other video you were just talking about that was that was the Iowa Rockwell beat, right? Mm -hmm. the, yeah, um, Iowa like, produced. I guess of it. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was pretty yeah everything is like has a meaning i would say but i appreciate y'all for like watching the videos and telling me that it's really good feedback and yeah, nah, you're yeah, very, I mean, yeah you're very yeah. deliberate on the videos and the imagery and everything awesome thank you <laughs> yeah no i agree yeah definitely with anything in the videos anything that you post on your ig or just you know anything on the cover art of, of the songs or the singles yeah it definitely seems like you put in your research like you were yeah. talking earlier um yeah so like uh it's interesting that novak was talking about your sound evolving on rex and then the, and the album this that you dropped this year right because i mm -hmm. felt like like the first album golden which is, you know, when I first experienced um, you as an artist, like that was like a lot of like home cook, like hip hop, like soul food for me, like a lot of good comfort food, right? But then when I heard the new album, I was like, wow, like Ari's actually trying to stretch herself musically here because I could feel like you leaning into it's like sort of like singing into almost like rock and obviously, you know, <laughs> reggaeton and, you know, like trap and all that. So it's like, yeah, were you like very... um I don't know how to put it like like adamant about you wanting to stretch yourself as an artist when you when you draw the second one most definitely I think like the whole concept of the album came like from that idea of wanting to stretch out and moving to the east coast for like a good time like it really forced me to like take in my individuality as a person as an artist and I was like you know what like what else do I have to lose I'm in a whole new city um, with these really dope musicians and producers and engineers. I have the resources for it, one, which is the most important thing. And um, I just I just took took it and like ran with it. And the whole album is experimental. Um, definitely got a lot of, I don't know, can I curse in this podcast? Yeah. yeah I mean, bought a, a lot of like shit for it. Um, a lot of people <laughs> like, spiritually like attacking me like real talk what? I, went a lot. I went through a lot with this album like and he, that's why like i'm so happy to be here in this podcast to kind of go into like hold that whole Please. process and no dive into it so like yeah, not say sure. mess not say less say more because to okay. quote your first yeah. album part of my french i fucking got a letter b so so but spill yeah. it what you got what you got yeah i mean like you said golden is a, is a very soulful album i made it with very beautiful people family that's a very like good feeling type of album and then entre el fuego in between the fire or flames as mm -hmm. you would interpret it it's literally that like i had to go through one not having my family with me you know like being in the city feeling like loneliness and like lonesome and wanting to be back in my home so one of that is like i carry that throughout the whole entire album two heartbreak dealing with that um he, dealing with a lot of rebirth and um i think i went through a lot of deaths in like the creative process of of that album and i was right. able to learn a lot of meaningful lessons for example like 
working with a lot of like male um, musicians and engineers, it was really tough on my end to be able to like sometimes get my ideas validated. And um, yeah, that was something that was really hard for me. Like I had to learn that. Like when I was little, my mom was like, and dad, they were like, you're going to have to learn this another way mm-hmm. or the other. You're your own person and you have to look out for yourself. And this album, like, I, I learned that, you know, I learned that like, I've been so blessed to like work with Rudolph, which is like, he's like real, he's my engineer in DC. Okay. Um, so it's, it's been that part. And like, thankfully, like when a female engineer was part of Unravel Me, um, one of the track nine yeah. in the album. That's so jam right there. Yeah. Unravel Me. This, this album is just like, so like I'm a Sagittarius, so I'm a, I'm a fire sign in that that it just encompasses my personality, like in in that album, like feeling fire inside of you and like running it with the world, and it's just yeah, it was just a beautiful experience. Very like learned a lot. Yeah. So you mentioned your your parents, and I actually um, I'm not trying to put you on the spot. Obviously, just just um dive in as deep as you want but like a lot of your raps you give homage to your mom i think you've you even had her in like the paradise video right yeah am i mistaken right Mm -hmm. so my ear goes to that because like whenever i write rhymes i secretly write about my mom who i lost like Mm -hmm. she passed um a little before my second one was born so like the second one never got to got to meet her so sorry for your loss no thanks but like Mm -hmm. he he for some reason he mourns more not that the one that got to spend time with her doesn't right but he's a little more like um outwardly facing on his grief but anyhow i i say that because i feel like i can i can i can feel how much you love your mom and your raps as far as like um how much you look up to her Mm. like is that was that um longing to be near family for the second album was that you sort of like trying to therapeutically like like go through that process I guess of being removed oh, from like yeah. I don't know it's like a culture shock of sort of, of some sort yeah most definitely like I definitely talk I don't know my heart always just goes to like the fem- the the women in my family and like yeah, the female right. lineage that I carry with me like there's a lot of women in my family so I've always just been taught to like feel empowered and like that I can do anything like they a lot like my mom uh, my grandmother, my my older sister, and like my my other cousins, like they've always taught me to like be uplifted, and like they uplifted my soul. So I definitely carry that um in um in routine. I talk a lot about like dealing with the loss of my grandma. Um, she passed away in twenty sixteen. I know. Um, if you listen to Golden, I talk a lot about her in there. Right. Just dealing with that till this day is like very heartbreaking, and seeing my mother like deal with that loss um I definitely feel like really really connected to her till this day and so just putting that in my rhymes like in a way it helps me heal and it helps like the other women in my family heal um yeah very it's, special it's, it's therapeutic I mean because I picked up something happened here when I was listening I was listening to your body of work and I'm like you know every album involved you could definitely feel that loss you rap about because yeah but you you know, those grandmas are like the the souls of the family, pretty much. And what you what you see, pretty much, is you draw like a lot of energy from your mom, mm-hmm. and your mom basically pretty much st- you know, stepped in. But at the same time, you watching her evolve without you know not without her mom, and mm-hmm. then basically you learn to adjust without your grandma. So you can see that evolution. That's one of the things I was saying, like how how much you change in terms of your personality coming out, that fire and that intensity coming out, like run it. No, like the run it track basically is like man you hear it and you just like you compare run it to golden and you're like wow you know it's like you know you're, you're leveling up pretty much you're going like super saiyan almost you're like watching you go to different <laughs> levels different heights right now stuff yeah. yeah um for sure i'm excited you know to like keep going and like using what i've been through in my life and um, in my music and like showing the world that part of me so Novak brought up Run It, and I think that wasn't on either of the albums. It was sort of like a standalone mm-hmm. single, right? For sure, yeah. But like yeah. Dig, like I'm the hip hop head. 
I'm always like, my ear is always leaning on to like some of the Easter eggs you throw in it, right? Because I think in Run It, you threw like a, it was written Nas reference. And I think yeah. one yeah. of the, I think in the first album, you threw out like Protect Your Neck or it might've been the second one. So exactly. that that's obviously a woo. So it's like, mm-hmm. what what part of your old soul kind of leans into some of that, the, the hip hop elder gods? Because it's like, yeah. obviously, you know, it's not always about that. Like, I don't even think people even care about writing rhymes sometimes nowadays, you know? Yeah. Like I said, I mean, I grew up around that music. Thank God to like my dad. Um, like, <laughs> oh, oh, it's biggie. Like my mom too, you know, like they were, they were big hip hop heads. And um, so when I grew up listening to it, I kind of just had it in the back of my mind all the time. My older sister, shout out her. She put me on to a lot of good music, um, music that I've never even heard of. And so like when when I'm Adi, like I'm I'm a hip hop head, you know, back home. Yeah. When I'm Adi the Indigo, I'm exploring sounds, being weird, being creative, you know, like expanding type shit. So like I don't limit myself as an artist, but I definitely like do feel some soul connection when I hop on like a boom bat versus like a trap beat and like but I'm able to like be myself in my own ways, either um, either sounds, you know. Yeah, I noticed that. You know, you write about that. Like, you know, there's two different. It's almost like Big had two different personalities. There's Notorious B.I.G. and there's Biggie Smalls. And then mm-hmm. you know, you think there's Ari and there's Ari Indigo. You know, it's two different. It's two different personalities. It's almost like a When You think about it. Like I was listening to some the way you're flowing on uh, Run It. All those references you put on that track, you could tell you I could hear the influence of who you grew up listening to. And that's always awesome. You can hear like what an artist grew up listening to. And you go, okay, I know what she had in her tape deck growing up, her CD player, MP3 player. I knew where this reference came from. So yeah, it was refreshing to hear. Yeah, most definitely. But yeah, I'm definitely inspired by so many artists from the city. And like I always shout them out. Like I've had I'm always talking about Chicago and like what's going on over there. So like a lot of the influences I have is like obviously Chance, like Saba, Pivot mm-hmm. Game, like the fact that they were like youth going to open mics, community based open mics, and like were able to like get their ideas and dreams out in the world is crazy. So like as little as like hip hop from from Chicago like can make a big difference in the world, and it made it for me. I'm just so blessed to like be able to grow up in that environment. So I just love how you can kind of like dip your toe into the the golden 90s sound, but also stay current. Like sort of like walk me through your feelings on like the current sound of like trap and reggaeton. And like, mm-hmm. I think like for me sometimes, and this is like sort of cringeworthy when you say like whenever somebody's rapping in Spanish, I love it, but then I don't always identify the genre, right? So I think like in the uh-huh. one of the tracks, Fuego, Fuego um, Bibi, Bibi yeah. that's reggaeton, yeah. right? Yeah. I can sort of yeah. hear like, you know, all right, I, I got it, I got it. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes like, I don't always, like I'm always about the trap sound, but like, is that mm. trap? What is that? Is that is that reggaeton? What is that? You know? It's everything. <laughs> and, you know, it's kind of like it's kind of like an old age old argument of like why are we even um, saying what rap and hip hop is anymore? Like no, it's yeah. just blurred lines um, at this point, right? Yeah, definitely wanted to experience experience with that sound. Definitely did, but like it, if you really like listen to the lyrics, I I like reference a lot of like Mexican old ranchero music that my yes. grandparents loved. Yeah. That line, um, cuando dos almas se quieren, por más que se alejan, alejen, nunca se pueden olvidar. Like, for as long as two souls leave each other, you can never forget them. That's a line from, like, a ranchero song. So, like, it's everything when I when I say, like, okay. just because I'm, like, rapping on, like, like a reggaeton sound, um, like, I still have that part of me that I throw in, um, Cause I don't know, it's just like it's just crazy to to be able to like feel cool experience experimenting with different sounds and shit. Yeah. <laughs> no, I I really love it because like um, I definitely cannot deny that I've also like like the Bad Bunny sound has caught a hold of me right, and it's kind of like mm-hmm. his dope house. He's playing in different lanes, and it's like 
sort of like a culture lesson for me, you know, because it's like growing on 90s hip hop and being a woo head. And then sometimes I I collab or just, you know, chop it up with some of my, my Latino folks. And it's like, you know, reggaeton has been around for a while. I'm like, damn, like I I <laughs> sometimes need to be like, I need to be schooled on this, you know? So it's nice that you're kind of telling me too, like you kind of like toss in the, the ranchero ingredients as well. Most you know, definitely. Into what you're cooking up. Um, yeah, another type of music that I did in the album, Corridos. I don't know if y'all are familiar with that genre, but it's like- Is it like um, Pesto Pluma sort of? Yeah, kind of, yeah. yeah, for sure. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> for sure. But right. like, there's no, there's no audio without Mexican sound. And like, I, I really want to make that clear because I think everything that I've ha I've done to this point in my music career is traced to like Mexican art and sound and what it means to like carry that in me and like my music. So I definitely like try to like do homages here and then about like my culture and like where I where I come from and what I heard growing up in the house. Yeah. No, I heard I heard the Corridos. Uh, first time I heard it, I was like over, like almost. Look, I'm not that far from Pilsen, so it's like when I'm going to get tacos or something, and I hear the music in the car, and you're like, "What is that?" Because like it's like a ballad, and you hear hear somebody rap. Ballad, and sing. yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's like a ballad. You sit there, you hear the beat, then you catch the beat for a minute, and everybody's like, "Man, you you understand?" I'm like, I had four years of Spanish, and I didn't understand some of it, but I'm like, I get what they're saying right now because you know, like in the English, the problem is. There's things we say that make no sense. Mm. But you guys, you know, like, you know, we're, like the way you use possession in Spanish is so different than the way we use it in English. You know, like the way we say it sounds pretty dumb sometimes, like the car belongs to us. <laughs> and, and so like people always correct you, like you're saying it wrong. Or, or when you're trying to learn Spanish, everybody's like, no, don't say it that way. Say it this way. So, I mean, like, yeah, it's like a ballad when you listen to it. You have to really slow down and just, man, close your eyes and, and hear what the words are saying to you at that point. Mm -hmm, for sure. Um, the sound is like pretty universal, you know, it has influences from mm -hmm. everywhere, but like uh, common themes that you hear, I would say, like if you don't listen to it regularly, it's like love, heartbreak, um, loss, death. And so that's like basically the album Entre el Fuego and like if I could describe it, it's like taking all these themes in my life and like be able to create an art out of it, which is pretty nice. And I love that you're always trying to infuse the message too, because it's like some some bars that are coming to me that I think you say something along the lines of like, if if you're like a female in this game, you're getting flowers. You know, if you actually have, if you're brave enough to kind of like step into this um this music genre, or this rap space, I think you oh, you're okay. shouting out to the the activists and you know the um the the folks that are trying to like shine a light on, on on you know things that that's not going right so um yeah i don't know say 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 a word about like how you feel like um the indigos are kind of like lost right like you, you trying to like make them feel make them feel like that they're not alone yeah do you, do you think that's like a a common thread that also is like always lurking in, in you know some of the music you do yeah for sure um a lot of that is like I think every artist and like even y'all doing this podcast as creatives could deal with like people telling you that you're weird or like you're not like normal for like having creative thoughts and mm -hmm. since I was little like in high school it hit me the most um like even though I wasn't that like involved like socially I was always creative like I was always writing and um I was getting up in class like saying my poems to the class and like people like the girls in like my grade would literally like pick on me and like make fun of me and just make comments so like for a young person to to feel like that like I would never like want to like see other 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 youth you know deal with that and like I just want to like say a message to them like just like let your light shine and like just, you know, like, even though you're in these spaces, like, do your thing, keep creating, um, following your, your path into that, because I definitely, it took a lot of strength, you know, to, like, stay creating and, like, stay active in, like, my creativity, despite people telling me that it was not okay, or it was weird, or out of, like, the ordinary, 
so I think that's what an indigo is and like that's what I want to create like an indigo collective of young kids so yeah that would be dope though you think about all the all the different talents and all the different personalities coming to one collaborate you know record or even album would be nice you know I think you think about the different styles that you know the different ways you perform the Carritos, Ranchera and everything like that you put all that together I mean, it's a it's an awesome ballad because to be able to, to bridge the different language and the different concepts of music and bring them to one platform, this will make everything shine the most. Because like, you know, a lot of times, you know, you think about every culture, like if you're playing a Japanese video game, the ability to rap in Japanese and go back to English and vice versa is awesome. You know, the same thing you're doing with Spanish. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing, you know, especially when it's delivered the right way, the way you deliver it, the way you, you know, you master the language, the way you go back and forth. Man, it's it's pretty impeccable. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Um, that made me get teary. <laughs> but it's true. Like the I want to make that. Like that's the goal for sure. Like be able to take all into one, into one like project, maybe even, you know, and just make sure like there's a saying, like, if you don't talk about your people, like when will like the next generation talk about you guys? And so just keeping that going on and like making sure my art is like gonna last a while you know making sure I make that statement and like I accomplish everything I want to in my rhymes and art so when when Novak was um waxing poetic on the the paradise video I was surprised that that was your that was the first time you recorded with Iowa Rockwell because yeah. the first time I was introduced to you like I, I would chop it up in his in his home studio from time to time, you know. Shout out to the comfort zone. But yeah. then, like, he'd be like, "Yeah, here, check this out. This this is something I was working on with Video Dave, or this is something I was working on with MC Crave, or maybe Doc Watson." And all of a sudden, he starts playing this music video. I was like, "Who who who the hell is this? How do you know this person?" He was playing me um, "String Theory," String and theory. I was like, "This is <laughs> like dope as fuck, like what? <laughs> like." Yo, like the basketball vibes, like shooting in Chicago, like it's an art scene and, you know, like, mm. like catching the summer vibes of it all. And obviously, you know, like just just to be calling like a hip hop song, String Theory, that that's on some hip hop shit, too. Like there's there's some hidden Easter egg, sure. egg, um, <laughs> eggs that I still haven't untapped here. But mm. yeah, that was nice. That was nice. I think you had that video and Paradise shot by the same person, yeah. I think. Right. Yeah, those were like the videos I took out for for Golden, um, like the main okay. singles of the album. But yeah, String Theory. I mean, I will pull up. He's in the video. If y'all catch Yo. him, um, in the background. <laughs> <laughs> so he's there. Um, my homies were skating in Pilsen, just doing what we do in the summer, as any Chicago right. person does in in the shy and showing other people that love that running these streets without the phones on the skateboards so the, the <laughs> other kind of like um dope hip-hop reference for me or i don't know if it's really hip-hop reference as, as much as like it makes me reflect on stuff so like when i was a kid i would always like draw the wood logo like random places like that's, everywhere that's like on my notepad <laughs> on the school desk I was trying to be like a graffiti artist, but I really wasn't that artsy with it. And I, I didn't want to spend money and buy some spray paint. But anyhow, like, I think there was um, a line you were writing about that you would draw like like pyramids, like on your hand or something like that, or the shape of uh, it. Yeah. And you had on your album cover too, <laughs> That's right? That's crazy. Yeah. While you were saying, I was thinking of that line. And yeah, literally middle school, I would always, just, I don't know why, but like pyramids are so fascinating to me. Like the the mystery and like everything that comes in like just Egypt, like shout out Egypt and all like my Egyptian friends. Cause I have yeah. a couple and I just want to go there one day and just like oh, be and, like post it up. But like, I've always been so intrigued by them. And like, I would always draw them in like my notebooks, like you said, like quizzes, random, random things. Um, so if you saw me at that point in my life and I had a pyramid in my hand, like you knew I was just doodling. <laughs> but if you but if, 
Yeah. But then culturally, they're there are almost more pyramids in Mexico than are in Egypt. Right. That's the crazy thing about it. Yeah. That's the crazy yeah. thing. Um, the pyramid in Golden, I actually am looking mm -hmm. at it right now because I have a, mm -hmm. like, a cover in front of me. But that is from Mexico. And mm -hmm. I took that and I put it in the cover um, just because I was fucking with it and it looked cool. But that <laughs> cover is taken in like like on a cliff um, in a small town that my mom is from in Michoacan. I spent a, that's where the whole concept of Golden comes from. Like I spent three or four months living there before I released Golden. And that was like that moment leading up to it where it like confirm gave me confirmation, like, yeah, you're doing something like this. You answered yeah. my question. I was gonna ask that question. Like, yeah, I saw the pyramid. I'm like, where's that at? I, I knew it was in Egypt, but I'm like, that's definitely a, that's definitely South America. Yeah. At this point. It's definitely Mexico. Um and yeah. I have that song Morelia in Golden. That's mm -hmm. like the capital of Michoacan, where my mom is. Um, so just shouting it out and like really putting these moments that I spent in Mexico in in that album is really cool. And also the all the fam and like cousins in Mexico are like, you put you put us like on the album like that's hey, really, really proud, yeah. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I had that. I definitely had that. Let's go down to Morelia. Yeah. I had that like trapped in my head. It was like an earworm for a while. But who did you have? I don't think it was on that track. You had an older person kind of like speak in a snippet. Oh, right? yes. that, like Was that fam? No, but wow, 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 back. Maybe. It's probably a story. Well, maybe because obviously like i don't know what it was i didn't get interpreted i didn't ask my wife like hey what what is this person saying here but so it was important because it was like the music went away and i just like story time almost right so right. this is chavela vargas she is a mexican ranchera singer oh top two top one whatever you want to call it musical okay influence. Okay. All the time. I love her and I love what she stood for and I love right. that. She was like, she was like a masculine, feminine, like singer. And like, she broke so many stereotypes at that time of like music in Mexico that you would never think of. And like her voice, you know, it carries a lot of like raspiness that has yes. a lot of like sorrow to it. And like, yeah, that's like hearing her really like made me like believe in like I have to put out different personalities in my music and for people to really know like my emotions and she I love her and I put decided to put her in the album um so that was really special to me for sure <laughs> okay. yeah she definitely has a, a voice dope. that you, you can't you can't forget so I gotta I gotta do my homework I gotta do yeah. my, my RE research here. <laughs> yeah. So um you talking about your different personalities. So is is yeah. Lil Wowie, is that another one of your, yeah. your alter egos? <laughs> yeah, that's like my other alter ego. Well, I just have two right now. It's Lil Wowie and Ari the Indigo. Lil Wowie right, right. is that Chicago kid, hip hop head, <laughs> love <laughs> skater. Little weirdo, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but like Lil Wowie. Um, so Wowie is something that, like, a nickname that my dad gave me um, when I was a baby. I just stood in the fam, and like they call me Wowie um, because I couldn't say my name when I was little, like Adi. So I would say Wowie, and right. just like like that 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 alter ego is like very like youthful type of person, you know, like childhood vibes. Um, so yeah, I just made a song called Lil Wowie's World because <laughs> at that point, like if I was in high school, I literally felt like I was living in my own world, like making the mm. most of it. So it's also a message to like other like people listening. The world is what you make it. Making sure you realize that, Christian. Pretty clever though. Yeah, that, yeah, that alter ego. You think, um, you know, most people, most artists develop more alter egos. You think there's another alter ego waiting to come out or? Maybe, you know, maybe for the next time. <laughs> I got to like, tune into the next my project, the next yeah. project. So, yeah. So what, what you got to tease for us? Because I know you're, you're East Coast nowadays <laughs> and 
you're probably staying creative and trying to think about future projects and future plans. Like yeah. you kind um, of like, you kind of tapped into a, li uh, a little bit. Yeah. Um, I have a goal right now is to just get better at writing and like composing stuff. Um, if I meet other creatives and like engineers and artists and musicians, just like connecting with them and working. And I've been doing that over here in DC. There's a lot of creativity happening. Um, just similar to Chicago. So just like making those connections, getting into the studios. I have my own studio at home now um, that I've been able to like have, just if I want to record a verse, literally have a mic right here. Nice. That, that Iowa gave me. So oh, get out. Um, Iowa got me this for my graduation um, gift. And oh, it snap. And you you spit it on the the new album too that. that you got your you got your degree too right so that was like yeah. is that all this year or what? Yeah, I did it. I did the degree in three years, and wow, really I recorded late. Golden literally like on finals week type shit. So I was saw me like so stressed with school and like doing this. So he was like, you know what, man, you put in the work. But I have a little story time for y'all. This mic right here, it's like another. It's a blue mic. Um, I don't know if y'all know Kaina, the, she's like an artist in Chicago. Um, she's really dope. Um, Kaina, she okay. that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I mentioned that a lot in, in Golden. Oh, shout right. out, in Paradise, shout out Kai. Pass me up as a mic. And she did, like, that, that was the first ever mic her parents got her. And I met her at a show. Um, we chopped it up. And I was like, yo, I have these ideas. I want to make music, art. But like, I'm also like, I don't have the resources for it or material yeah. or motivation to do it. Like a lot of kids in the shy. Right. So she she invited me to her home. She opened her doors for me and like, and gave me that mic. And so like, like that mic, I recorded my first ever song with it. It was really special to me. And so like the fact that Iowa got me that it's like, I don't know. It just seems crazy. Like everything is like meant to be in a way. Yeah. That's amazing. That was my little story time. Sorry, y'all. Passing. No, I love that passing the hip hop torch because when he was on with us, episode thirty, we were talking about like sort of like what is like some hip hop stuff you would put in a time capsule, you would bury in a time capsule, and he's talking about a microphone that I think I think it's Pop's bottom that he just wow. never let go. Of. That's insane. Yeah, I've asked crazy. him about that, but you got to, you got to. It's kind of funny. Dope, like, yeah, that's a dope little conversation to have. You know, what it is, you? it is. And then like he he said he would put like black tape or electrical tape on it just to purposely like let shows know that it's his because like maybe they'd be packing stuff away and they're like, oh, this is our mic. And he's like, actually no, because I put this on here. This is my mic. Give it back to me, please. Thank you very much. Word. <laughs> Put your name on that. Right, right. <laughs> Make that known. That's dope. Yeah, similar to that. Yeah. That's nice. That's nice. Mm -hmm. So, like, I, I also have to ask you, because, um, again, like, so many, so many hip-hop references. But, again, I know you're not writing it or branding it more or less to kind of like say see guys i'm down like i just love it like it's just <laughs> part of your dna right so you're talking about little little wowie because i'm thinking about all the the lils in, in the rap game and obviously Ari the indigo you know tyler the creator and all the thes in the rap game yeah your, your ig for some reason you have it to infinity is that like souls of mischief or like what's what's the story behind that <laughs> yeah no yeah for sure souls and also pro era uh, uh, yeah, pro era. Nice. Pro era and odd future were like other top influences in my music, and so when Capital C started talking about like this till infinity thing, I was like, I see, I see where he got it from, Soul's Mischief, and like they they completely turned it around and make it their own. So I thought that was so dope. <laughs> I made that my IG handle <laughs> so long too. Like I'd be at shows trying to give on my Instagram. People are like, wait, what? What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to culture y'all. Listen. I swear I need to change it. I promise I will, but God damn. So 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, that's wrong with that. You took it and made it your own. I mean, that's the whole thing with hip hop. You take it, turn it into your own version of what you wanted to be at that point. Yeah, that that's what art is about. You know, using people's ideas inspiration as inspiration. For sure. Who are you listening to right now in terms of hip hop? Uh, what are your What are your influences? Uh, you missing an Odd Future and everybody else. Who else? Who else are you listening to? Um, I try to like listen to a new artist every day, like before Word. I wake, before I start my day. Word. So like, everything, like everything, really, like I've been listening to like trap artists recently, and like yeah metro's album and like mm -hmm. everyone so it's just like not one thing but um i definitely love hip-hop artists and i try to get into like mexican folk singers or like a little bit of everything to be honest you know um in, in your new album um in Vuel vuelve mm -hmm. um there's like a sped up sample and i i kid you not because I, I saw sizza <laughs> with my partner not long ago i was like is this a SZA song? Because it's like so sped up, I can't even tell who's singing it. And then I had to look it up. It's like, who's it, Gideon, right? I can't say too much. <laughs> oh, my bad, my bad. Anyhow, it's somebody. I can't say too much because it's somebody. It got cleared but... somehow, but <laughs> it's somebody. It's Gideon. Somebody it's that sounds Gideon. like them. No, yeah, it's Gideon. We got it. We got to give credit to that song and like to his work. Yo, so it's I Gideon. Like that. Um, my homie Edwin Edzel produced it. And okay. I heard that beat and he he made it like out of like a heartbreak too so it was just like right. very similar vibes that song is about leaving Chicago and like that heartbreak that happens when you leave the city yes. so it just fit you know it just fit and like we had trouble like with clearing it but we figured it out and then we got away hey, okay okay well it, well, man, well, man. This, ain't, this ain't the snitching podcast i i apologize <laughs> but it did give me those iowa vibes like i love how iowa rock will flip that uh that shadows gambino which i'm i'm shocked that he didn't get anyone knocking down his door but i'm 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 super thankful and, for that. and y'all need to blame your boy mm -hmm. iowa, because uh -oh. he always is on me about like you know what until they knock on your door literally like <laughs> <laughs> so it's iowa like he, he's a little <laughs> devil by my side every time he's like, don't worry about it man like cool come on Yo, just roll with it baby just roll with it <laughs> now, now with you out in dc are you starting to see like that whole music situation out there they got go-go music and everything else going on out there mm -hmm. dc's got a lot of interesting styles what have what have you seen so far Definitely Gogo. -Go. I love Gogo, -Go. and not to compare, but it reminds me a lot of like Juke in a way, and like like House in general because it has a like soul feel to it, and like you can literally you literally bounce the same way to it, like when you dance to it. That has like that has definitely inspired me too. Um, a lot of rappers like you'd be surprised how supportive like artists out like underground artists are out here like I go to shows and the amount of like love that I see people show each other is uplifting as hell like that's why I go to shows like if I can every other weekend or every weekend um to practice one and to network because I mean I love doing that any chance I get but yeah DC is dope DC is dope um a lot of soul to it you get to you been to Ben's Chili Bowl yet? Yup, I've been to <laughs> both locations. <laughs> it something about the chili, I don't know. It just doesn't ever fulfill me like a beef, like a beef with something. Hey. With some <laughs> oh. I love I love food from from our city. It's special. No one can top it. <laughs> <laughs> no, we get you a Portillo's out there. We'll make it happen. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> tell me why every time i land i tell my sister to like either give me a polish on maxwell's a bee mm -hmm. or like just anything <laughs> some pizza hey, east coast pizza is different man it's a cracker and you you, you know they fold it and i'm like what's this the same oh, pizza man i love skirt pizza no one could take that away <laughs> but, 
crazy. Real talk. So yeah. um, I could just honestly just chop it up for days with you, Ari, because I just dig the vibe. I actually wanted to pull this out really quickly because I'm not sure if you're aware of this. So I bought this not long ago. It's a hip hop. I can't even see it because of my background. It's hip hop trivia. It's dope. It's basically That's like dope. eight categories of random hip hop stuff. And shout out to Video Dave. He was on a podcast from the guy who created it. Whoa. So I'm bringing it up because I'm curious if you wanted to answer a couple. And I'm putting... Let's see. Let's see. I'm putting Novak on the spot here too because like, I don't even know if he can write or he can um answer some of these questions. Y'all got to help me if you see me struggling. <laughs> <laughs> come on, Novak. You got to come. Let me get my come. phone ready to start. Uh -oh, uh oh, okay, okay. Got a lifeline over there. <laughs> <laughs> he called Iowa. I got a question for you. <laughs> you know, he'd pick up too. <laughs> so I'm not sure if you can see it in the chat. I actually popped in all eight categories and Again, we don't have to do this all day, but I just got this. I think it's like a super dope thing. Shout out to um the creator, um Sean, Sean Kantrowitz. And yeah. um he actually had video Dave on his podcast. And <laughs> um no, 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 no shade on video, but he only got like two questions right. And I think he was like one of the guests that that got the lowest scores. So anyhow, the pressure's on. The, the pressure, pressure is is on gotta get the fan on in here i'm getting this <laughs> so if you can read the categories do you have a do you have a pick in on what, which one of these you might want me to pick from you could pick you know what you let's got do, let's do burn hollywood burn oh snap all right all right i'm just gonna randomly select from the deck see, let's see <laughs> let's, get it. let's get it let's get it it's game time we went from story time to game time <laughs> T.I. has co-starred in the on-screen adaptation of this Marvel comic book franchise. Is it Guardians of the Galaxy, Avengers, Ant-Man, or X-Men? Ant-Man? Ant-Man. Yeah. That was a softball. That was a softball. No, no, no. That was nah. a good job. We got that. Got that. I know T.I. plays herself in every movie, in every role. <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't wrong. <laughs> That's his range. I love that. Okay. All right, so y'all, y'all got the burn Hollywood burn category. I'll give y'all that. Yeah, go for it, Ari. You see the next one. What my motherfucking name? Hey, you went uh, straight let's for go. it. Let's see. Let's straight for it. Turn this to the the custom pod, which I'm okay with. Random card. Here we go. <laughs> What all right, this is this is crazy because my oldest was trying to figure out the answer to this. So, which of the following is not a name of one of the yay and Kardashian children? Before. Is it Saint Pablo, Chicago, or North? Which one is not Pablo? A name? Pablo. <laughs> Pablo. No, Pablo. Y'all right, y'all right. Mm -hmm. Didn't happen. On the way still, future projects. Uh, yeah, I know, yeah, I know my Kardashian. I can go on Kardashian Jeopardy right now, probably. I'm dead. <laughs> I'm dead. That's the next. That's the next game y'all could do in the podcast. <laughs> Who did Kim date in 1985? Oh, she was just born. How many times? We're teasing, a, <laughs> we teasing a pod mini series here. Yeah, let, let's definitely at least go maybe one one for each category. So, yeah. what, which one y'all thinking? Mm -hmm. the next one. Lincoln Bill. Yeah. Lincoln Let's Bill. Go. All right, Lincoln Bill. Let's get it. Random selection. All right. Bad Meets Evil is a duo composed of Eminem and this Detroit MC. Do I even have to read? Oh, damn. Hold no, on. I, 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 know. I, I know you know Novak. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's bad. So no, while we, it's all right. That's why it's multiple choice. That's why it's multiple choice. All right, we got Danny Brown, Royce the Five Nine, Bizarre, or Big Sean. 
Yeah, I don't know this. I don't want to embarrass myself. On the okay, come on now. Uh, think hey. about the Detroit rappers. Bad meets evil. It's a duo composed of no Adderall. No Adderall. Oh. <laughs> no Adderall. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Bizarre, voice of five nine, bizarre and Big Sean. Uh oh, we're getting the video Dave cat uh, territory here. Might not be. Able to pull yeah, I need a. Out. I need a phone. <laughs> <laughs> lifeline uh, lifeline that's crazy i don't know man man that group man that group could have been they could they could do another joint together if they can get along no, that's gonna... fair that's fair so who's who's the answer what's the answer novak that's royce royce so the the tangent though guess, bro. <laughs> the tangent i was having this conversation not long ago was that mm -hmm. When you were saying they couldn't get along, because I, I think the Bad Meets Evil album was super dope, but they mm -hmm. never made another one. But like, why wasn't Royce ever on Eminem's out or label? Why was he never on Shady Records? Like that could have been an easy win-win for his for his um record label, right? I that's political to be honest with okay. you in that situation. Okay. You think about Shady Aftermath, and you know you look at even though Dre did a lot of production for Royce, and you know. It's just, man, you know, it's weird. It's one of those what if situations in hip hop right, right now. Right, right. Next up. <clears throat> so we got three. Y'all can pick the other one. <laughs> All right. All so right. we already got Lincoln Bill, Burn, Hollywood Burn, and what's my motherfucking name out the way? Mm, um, check the rhyme. All okay. right. Check That's my rhyme. youngest <laughs> favorite category. He was pulling these cards last night. <laughs> all right, let's see what we got. All right. <laughs> this is a good question. <laughs> On the song December 4th, Jay-Z's mom recalls that young Hove taught himself how to do this at the age of four. Was it tie his shoes, read, ride a bike, or rap? <laughs> I'm gonna take a guess. Tie his shoes. All right, what you got, Novak? Ride a bike. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Damn, no, no. Why are we? Yeah, that's crazy. I gotta yeah. study. Uh, yeah, I was just listening to this morning. So there's reason why. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you cheated. How you know we were prepping for this? How you know we were no. for this? It, came, it came on SM Radio. I was, you know, you are like, uh, you know, Gloria starts talking on the track. Right. And you know that that beat is so lazy. You know it's a three, it's a three sixty beat. It, it goes over and over. It's on it's only got six chords on it. Mm -hmm. And I was listening to Pharrell describe like how he produces. It's like uh, when he was doing when they were doing uh, the Black album. Yeah. Pharrell gets all hyped up, calls Jay to the studio to play to play the simmer, you know, to play a couple of tracks for him. And Pharrell's the only person vibing out on it. Jay and they're like, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> And then somebody then somebody told a story out there how Big used to do that. Big used to be in the studio, you know that Long Kiss Goodnight song. Right. He did that song on four forty ounce beers in a in a in a jar of pretzels. <laughs> now I'm just like, wow. I thought you wow. said jar of pickles. That's no funny. pretzels, man. Jada Kiss told the story, and Jada said <laughs> none of the stuff made any sense when they were recording it, but when it came out, yeah, everybody was like, wow. <laughs> It's crazy. The environments artists be recording in. Mm -hmm. The elements. The elements. So we got linear note life left, rap life left, and big, big moves. Oh, and digging into the crates too, I think. Yeah, there's what, just four more left. What you got, Ari? Uh, rap life? All right, let's dig it. Let's see, let's see. what you got. I still think you're 50 50 or somewhere along that line. You're not, you're not, you're not nowhere, near, not uh, uh, <laughs> nowhere near, nowhere uh, near in the low end. So this, this might be a hard one. Scott mm -hmm. LaRock was Karis One's blank when the <laughs> pair met each other in the mid 1980s. And yeah. actually, I don't even know this answer. And Karis One's like my favorite of all time. Yeah. Was he his roommate? Parole officer, social worker, or dentist? Scott LaRock was KRS One's blank. That's hard. Damn, no bag. You know this one either? Well, I mean, I mean, you no, know, Scott. I mean, like I'm trying to, I'm trying to think because I, that's Scott Sterling, right? So, <laughs> so I'm thinking, so I'm thinking out loud right now. 
it's interesting. Um, he was a, he was basically they basically Scott. If I'm not mistaken, that situation, I want to say Scott was his roommate. So again, Scott, uh, Scott, Scott hooped to play basketball and everything. Mm-hmm. That makes sense, low key. But he was also, that. but he also, um, you know, he also was, he also was, he also did help children and youth out. So you think in terms of, uh, yeah, I know what it is, but I didn't talk, I talked myself into what it is right now. I know what he was. So what are the options again? Real quick? Read them over again. Roommate, roommate, pro officer, social worker, dentist. Social worker. Because he was all he loved to help the kids and play basketball. Was, yeah, you say he works with youth, so social mm-hmm. worker. You just talked yourself in the answer. That helped it. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I had to think about that for a second. I'm like, what did Scott do? So <laughs> Scott helped kids. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, he got uh Scott got murdered trying to you know helping people get you know, he got murdered out in uh, 87, I believe. Yeah, I remember, man, I used to love Boogie Down Productions and uh, KRS One. So I still do. But yeah, that was uh, fortunate what, what could have been in that situation. That's so, like like Nas always like big L. homage to um Ill Will and whatnot. Ill Will, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like KRS would always like shout out to Scott. That's Warner. dope. Yeah. Rest in peace. Yeah. So linear life, leading a note life, digging into the crates of big moves. Digging in the crates. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be hard. Yeah. yeah. Light in the crates. <laughs> <laughs> the song Swagger Like Us by Jay Z, <laughs> T.I., Ye, and Lil Wayne samples this rapper singer. Is it Santa Gold, CeeLo Green, Missy Elliott, or MIA? MIA. <laughs> what, what you think, Ari? You think? No I was going right? to say Missy. No, oh. that can't be right. Miss Suri Laka. <laughs> That's what that is, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. Everybody it's stole this. Everybody it's stole this style. I was going to say, like, Missy's style is insane. Isn't it? It's like, not out. I think the fact that, like, she owns herself and, like, what she's wearing is so dope. She just got into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, right? Like last week or something like that. Yeah, yeah. she did. Shout out Missy. Yeah. She's, yeah. She's birthed a lot of MCs. If you think oh. about like, you know, MIA raps like her when she was younger. And then everybody goes, it might, you know, and then Missy raps like MIA. No, no, you can't do that. You can't. That's like saying like um, 84 Coupe de Ville is better. You know, it, no, the Cadillac, the Cadillac Escalade is better than Coupe de Ville, and the Coupe de Ville is the reason why we got to escalate. So that's the way you got to look at their relationship with Missy. There is nobody like that in that in this on this universe in terms of hip hop artists. Oh. Cool. Yes, that that was well deserved. The whole okay. thing. I do yeah. want it to the answer to be Missy because she is the goat, honor, on, honestly. But it was MIA. Mm-hmm. That that uh that gunshot song right with the yeah but but these are my planes that was planes <laughs> yes. all I wanted oh to it was it was sampled from the plane song planes. Like paper planes right paper planes yeah okay. I gotta go listen to it when the the meeting is over all I want to do it's not gonna bug now it's gonna bug me I gotta go listen. yeah because it's like it's like a sped up like mm-hmm. hook it's her it's oh, her okay. and then I'm like 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 us yeah but it's from the paper planes. Yeah, she's got like that. Uh, she's got that weird flow. At first, it, it grows. It's almost like Doja. It's it's like it's pre, you know, Doja Cat style a little bit, yeah, like MIA. That's fair. Mm. I I do dig M- MIA's swag. It's just like yeah, it's it's something different for sure. Wasn't there an award show where she was like doing something weird? Or was it the Super Bowl or something? I think I she came out pregnant. I think she came out pregnant rapping. If I'm not mistaken, it been MTV Awards. I forget. Yeah, M I yeah, M I A, she cool, you know, it's weird like how sometimes the hip hop, you like that next big thing, you drop two projects and then disappear. She's yeah. one of those ones. I'm like, where did she go? Right. Yeah. We never I don't think we got an album. I think we got a bunch of singles out of her, to be honest with you. I gotta check. I believe there was an album, but we didn't get the album, if you know what I mean, from her. Fair. M I A. <laughs> right, so big moves, linear note life. Last two. Which one's first? 
big moves because we're making oh, big moves. Hey, <laughs> what's this? The big shine <laughs> trivia. I'm about, it, I'm about it. I'm about it. The Universal Hip Hop Museum is located in this New York City borough. Is it Brooklyn, Bronx, Manhattan, or Queens? Bronx. I think it's Brooklyn. I think final Bronx. answer. Final answer, both the Hip hop was birthed <laughs> in the Bronx, but that's a whole different thing. Uh, <laughs> I think Bronx. Yo, I don't know. I'm gonna tip my hat to Ari on this one. She got it. Uh, the it's Bronx. It's right the Bronx. Right out the gate, didn't Bronx. hesitate. That's didn't like, hesitate. She wasn't doodling on her hand that time. Hey. She's like, the answer is C. Let's go. Hey, but that's like Berwin and Cicero. Actually, though. B. The answer is B. That's, that's like Berwin and Cicero. It is. Chicago. It's like Berwin and Cicero. <laughs> the Bronx is Cicero. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they got that. They got that Jay Z uh, exhibit going on there right now, and they yeah. got what is it like Book of Hove or something like that? The Book of Hove. Yeah. Well, I kind of want to go and check it out. There's um the Museum of African American History in DC, the Smithsonian, mm -hmm. and tell me why they got a whole two floors of hip hop exhibits and really. I need to check. I need to come. Oh, yo! So it's so wow. Dope. Fucking dope. Never, they have, they have Jay Dilla's um, B Pat. Like I, I don't know. He had a lot, but like he, yeah. he had like his personal, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Super Saiyan tangent. I think I visited my cousin in D.C. like years ago when he lived there, and um, this is before kids, before Google, before <laughs> Apple Maps, and all that. And we were trying to find the White House. <laughs> we couldn't find it and then the none of us knew the address <laughs> and then like i think we we gave up and we were driving back to my my cousin's like apartment or whatever and we're like wait a minute isn't it was that one wesley snipes movie murder at 1500 wasn't it uh -huh. 1500 pennsylvania whatever the hell yeah. <laughs> we thought about it too late we're like oh man before google man yo <laughs> But yeah, this crowd source any knowledge. Man. Up. You got the you got the White House, you got the crack house right across the street almost. It's literally on the same block. And then okay. you see Georgetown, right? With the, the cemetery inside the campus. Yeah. Man, that is creepy as hell. <laughs> and they have the exorcist stairs right there by Georgetown. It's man, spooky vibes for real. <laughs> I won't go trick-or-treating around there. I'm good, man. I might find somebody who's still who's still trapped. <laughs> for real. That was fun. <laughs> Yo, all right. Well, last category, y'all. Linear note life. Here mm. it is. The hip hop trio, the sequence, were among the first signees to the Sugar Hill label in the late 70s and featured this RB singer as its member. What the hell? Met Mary J. Blige, D'Angelo, Angie Stone, Teddy Riley. Wow. This is some Dusty's like. Wait, wait, wait. right here can you repeat the option i know right so the hip-hop trio the sequence were among the first signees to the sugar hill label in the late 1970s and featured this future r&b singer as a member was it mjb d'angelo angie stone or teddy riley that's a hard question i, I think i know what that is i think i have to the first oh. one or teddy all right, all right, all right. I got, what about you? I got, I got, is that D'Angelo's baby mama? I got Angie Stone. Oh, that, right, you, I took, you, I took him. I took him. I know out. about the sequence, and I don't know this shit. I took him. Oh, you do know about the sequence? Dang, I didn't even know who the sequence. Yeah, were. I, well, I know they are. Yeah, like I don't oh. know. I mean, so now that you say no, but now that you say D'Angelo, like that makes total sense. Like hearing it. They all tie together. I'm gonna have to steal your answer. <laughs> okay. All right, what's the answer, Novak? Angie Stone. Yo, the uh, mm -hmm. Dusty's um, uh, expert resident. Yes, sir. The answer is C. Angie Stone. Okay, Angie Stone. That's yeah. Cool. And, and I remember that Sugar Hill had a TV show about the making the Sugar Hill game. <laughs> watch the vh1 oh, that was man hard. That was i was watching vh1 late one night and i couldn't find my remote so that's how i felt that's how i learned about sugar hill even though i should know about sugar hill but my remote forced me to learn <laughs> they had a tv show about the whole sugar hill record label they, they were trying to revive oh, sugar hill oh. 
They didn't ha the revival, I guess, didn't happen, but they were trying. They tried to revive it. Mm -hmm. Damn, that uh, was fun. Uh, uh, that game's dope, man. Where, where'd you find that? At? <laughs> yeah, yo, I mean, shout out to my guy, actually, DJ Looms, DJ Luminous. I'm actually going to have him on our podcast at some point. He actually said his buddy was working on this trivia um set for a while. So I bought it on Amazon. And again, he has his own podcast. So um, check that out. Hip Hop Trivia Questions. You can literally find it on all the streaming platforms or just purchase it. It's like eight categories and That's yeah it's I'm nice so I, I know it was a little unfair because you both were tag teaming which was totally fine but when That's video true. Dave was on the show <laughs> on that podcast I want to say he was on there like he was right solo he was right solo he's right solo so <laughs> 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 A brave one for real. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sweating the bullets without without the fan, like our <laughs> earlier. The, fan. <laughs> <laughs> the spotlight and everything. <laughs> that was funny. But yeah, man, I appreciate y'all for having me out here. Yo. Thanks. Appreciate you for coming through. Lil Wowie. It's been amazing. <laughs> Definitely um shout shout out your uh your socials because now you can actually spell it so we can hear it yeah properly you can follow me on ig at 99.tilinfinate -E -E. till infinity so you could yes, just type sir. in Ari the indigo um y'all can find my music on all streaming platforms I have a couple of videos like we just talked about on YouTube as Ari the Indigo. So make sure y'all check it out. Listen to the new album. And yeah, thank you. Yeah. And besides the streaming platforms, when we had uh, Iowa Rockwell on, 30, on episode 30, he was talking about y'all are on the Video Day vinyl. So uh -huh. you, you, were, you were featured on that vinyl as well. That That was like... A happy kid moment right there. Like oh, that, sure. that was insane for me to like tell my family and like my friends, like, yo, I'm on a vinyl record and it's like my homies. So shout out Dave. Um shout out everyone, like class of ninety-nine and just everyone who like supports me and like smoke. Um right. he is another one of my producers who is incredible. Like he's out here doing crazy stuff. God, um, smoke video. The guy's trip, amazing. Trip surf. We have stay tuned for that, y'all. Too. We surf and I are working on like a mini documentary for my brand. Are you there? What? Wow. Surfboard C for real? Surfboard C. Yo, you two are like visionaries with like oh yeah your, your stuff. Met, so that's that's guess, amazing to hear. Yeah, I met him this summer, and off the bat, we were like, let's roll. So shout out like all that that crew and like the people that support me out there, shy, um, who are really cool and just talented. It insp they inspire me um to keep going, you know. Love it. Mm -hmm. nope. But nope. yeah, nope. shout out y'all. Appreciate y'all for having me. Yes, yes indeed. Mm -hmm. Novet, you want you want to close us out? Definitely, definitely, uh, definitely. Want to thank Ari uh, for coming through. You know, definitely a uh, little while we uh, want to thank Ari the Indigo, everybody, you know, all all the personalities, everybody for coming through today. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely uh, check her music out. You know, definitely gonna drop the, the links, drop the Instagram, everything inside the, you know, the the update for this, uh, the update for this episode. Definitely go check us out everywhere podcasts are available. We're on YouTube, we're on Apple Podcasts, we're everywhere out there. Definitely go listen to something dope today. Definitely check out Ari. Love. Peace.